China has knocked the US intelligence and the State Department out of tune over what's believed to be the biggest ever personal data theft by hackers. RT's Marina Portnaya explains. Well, this all revolves around a federal data breach uh, discovered back in April at the U.S. Office of Personnel Management. According to reports, the records and social security numbers of up to uh, 18 million former, current, and prospective federal employees were accessed by hackers. Now, uh, almost immediately, many U.S. pundits and security experts named China as the prime suspect for the cyber intrusion. The waterfall of unconfirmed blame hasn't been taken lightly by Beijing, and that may be why U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry took a much softer approach during his high-level talks with Chinese officials in Washington this week. On Wednesday, Secretary Kerry said the U.S. and China have agreed on working together to complete a code of conduct regarding cyber activities. During two days of talks, Kerry said all parties refrained from playing the blame game. It was not a uh, direct kind of confrontational pushback. There was an honest discussion about uh, without accusations, without any uh, finger pointing. Now, whatever damage control Mr. Kerry achieved was compromised within 24 hours by another top U.S. officials. On Thursday, U.S. Director of National Intelligence James, James Clapper said China is the leading suspect in the latest federal data hack. Clapper made his comments while speaking at a Washington intelligence conference, where he also said, quote, you have to kind of salute the Chinese for what they did. Unquote. Now, this marks the first time that anybody uh, from uh, the Obama administration or top uh, Washington official publicly attributed this breach to Chinese hackers. Beijing has denied any involvement in the incident. Now, while the data breach is still being investigated by the FBI, where Washington stands on the, this issue is rather confusing, giving, given the mixed messages coming from top to top U.S. officials. Well, let's discuss all this a bit further with that investigative reporter, David Lindoff, who uh, joins us now. Thanks very much for talking to us this evening. Um, what's your view on this? How do you think this whole episode will affect uh, US and China relations? Well, I don't think it'll affect the relations particularly, um, but I think it's an interesting issue because, first of all, it, if, if it's true that China got all that data, uh, from what I've been reading, it would allow them to basically figure out who all the undercover people are that they don't know about already uh, working overseas for things like USAID, State Department, uh, Defense Department, you know, all these various places. I think supposedly the CIA does a better job of keeping its people out of the database, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, secret people out of the database. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, this could be a, a huge blow to U.S. covert activities uh, if it's true. The other thing that occurs to me, though, is that uh, this idea that Clapper salutes the Chinese is really quite funny. Uh, he would love to be able to do that to China. And in terms of a code of conduct, uh, it's ludicrous for the U.S. to even be complaining about what China's done at all, since the U.S. has been, you know, we hear, spying on all its own allies, leaders, uh, other personnel. Uh, we just heard about the three French leaders in a row have been uh, compromised by U.S. spying. And uh, it goes on and on. The U.S. has absolutely no rules when it comes to uh, spying on friend or foe. And, and at least China is a rival of the U.S., maybe not an enemy, but a rival, uh, and doesn't make any pretenses of being our friend any more than we do of being their friend. So for them to do this is perfectly within the uh, ordinary behavior of states that are rivals. OK, but what, do you think there'll be narcs, though, by the comments? Because you've got John Kerry coming out saying, look, no accusations, no blame game. And then you've got Mr. Clapper coming out saying, well, yeah, it was definitely China, but well done. I mean, you know, there are mixed messages there. Surely China's going to be thinking, well, you know, they are going to be mildly upset, aren't they? No, no, because actually they must be laughing because, you know, Clapper is envious. He'd like to be able to do it himself with his uh, extraordinary uh, spying, electronic spying apparatus and his hackers. But uh, Kerry 
is hamstrung by the fact that American business loves China. They want to do bus more business there. And w what they are telling him, and he's dancing to their tune, is, you know, don't get the Chinese angry because then they'll, you know, respond by punishing some of us. So he's he's got to back it off and, you know, make nice to the Chinese so that American businesses are happy. Is it actually possible to back up with evidence these sort of accusations? I mean, because as a member of the public, you'll just see lots of facts and figures on the screen. You'll have no idea. I mean, is it, is it possible to actually sort of finger somebody with, with evidence that stands up? Well, they do it all the time with, with uh, you know, hackers who are private uh, individuals, uh, you know, tracing out... Uh, ISPs and and find you know people have ways of hiding where their real computer is and that kind of thing. But uh, a sophisticated uh, tech, techie working on that uh, can trace these things out and figure out who's doing it. Uh, that's how they trace some of these uh, data breaches to places like Romania and uh, have made some arrests. But I think when you're talking about something as sophisticated as China uh, or Russia or the United States. I, the actual intelligence apparatuses, I think it's very, very difficult because they have the capability with supercomputers and stuff to to do a tremendous amount of hiding of the routes that they take in order to do this kind of hacking. OK, David, we have to leave it there, but uh, interesting to talk to you. That was uh, David Lindorf, an investigative reporter. Thank you. Thanks for having me on.